Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Nonprofit Show. I'm really excited about this episode because this is a topic that, frankly, I've been learning about over the last decade, and I'm fascinated with how it works. And we have two amazing national thought leaders with us, Eric Sailbach and Joan Brown, coming to us from Third Sector Company. Um, welcome, you two. Thank you. Great to be here. Well, we have a lot of questions for you because this is one of those topics that I think people are like, oh, yeah, I know what this interim position is in this profession, but do they really? And I think you're going to help us to understand what this looks like. Another thing that helps us to understand what our sector looks like every day are our amazing presenting sponsors. They include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraisers Friday, and your part-time controller. They join us day in and day out so that we can explore these really interesting conversations with experts like our guests today. I'm flying solo today. I'm Julia C. Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I have amazing co-hosts that come to us from across the country. They are incredibly diverse with the, the slice of practice that they have within the nonprofit sector. They come from all different areas of our country and they are just marvelous, marvelous minds. And so I know uh, you've been able to get to know them and love them as I do. Um, but I get I get our guest today by myself. So Joan Brown, welcome. Uh, Third Sector Company. You can learn more about Joan and her work at thirdsectorcompany.com. And Eric Sealbeck, nonprofit consultant extraordinaire and coach. Now, you know, Eric, I have a, a place in my heart for coaching. It's a good thing. It we is a good thing. Coach. Yeah. And, you know, my husband pointed out to me years ago that if you turned on any professional sporting event from amateur to the pros, you would see a lot of different coaches, nutrition, mindset, muscles, batting, fielding, whatever it is. Right. And for some weird reason in the nonprofit sector, we haven't necessarily embraced that concept as, as a vital part of how we perform. And so I'm, I'm always intrigued by the whole coaching ecosystem, if you will. So I am thrilled that both of you are here. We wanted to chat with you about the interim profession and to get kind of an idea as to what you all are seeing and how this is playing out. Because for so many of us in the nonprofit sector, this is new. So Joan, I'm going to start with you and ask you, what is an interim professional? Like, how, how does this work? That's a great broad way to start this discussion. We could talk for a long time about that. In essence, it's really this idea of a professional person, someone trained, uh, usually someone with a history with nonprofits that says, I want to make this my work. I want to come into organizations that are in transition and walk alongside them, mm -hmm. help them make the best they can of this period of time, a temporary period of time. And the interim professional has honed their skills and experiences and wisdom to fit into that space and make it count for something. We think this is a an intentional and productive mm -hmm. time, not just a placeholder for organizations. So Eric, I, I'm going to just woman up and say, Joan's comments are really positive. And a lot of times I think that organizations come to interim, the interim issue in crisis. Sure. And what do you see? Do you see that like everybody's like happy heart? Yay team, we get to do this. Or is it more like, a, to be frank, like a, a stressful crisis management kind of situation? I think it's more of the OP moment where uh, organizations are like, what do we do? Uh, and the um, common view, I think, of interims is that there's somebody who comes in and just holds down the fort, keeps the seat warm, mm. uh, you know, d does all the basics to keep the organizations running. And, and then that's not the case, that we have an mm. opportunity 
to do um, change management in a method methodolo methodical, intentional, strategic kind of way to help organizations navigate this this kind of change. I'll tell you, I had my uh, first interim gig earlier this year, and I'm a convert because I also sort of went into it with that idea that I was just going to keep the seat warm and <laughs> out of it with a much broader perspective and understanding, right? That, that well, this really is about uh, how do you prepare the organization mm -hmm. for the next leader? How do you leave a solid foundation? You know, that's magical thinking because I've got to believe, and we're going to get into this in just a moment, you know, the the ecosystem of how we we think about this profession. First of all, we need to start applying the word profession. It, this is a professional, you know, piece of it. Um, before we get much further, um, Joan, Third Sector Company has, has done a really interesting thing. You created a white paper and really looked at the ecosystem of this sector Holy moly, after some pretty, which we're still in, pretty big changes, global pandemic, um, civil you know, discourse that's changing, um, a country that's grappling with some major philosophical issues, um, a general election, all of these things. And you all have pulled step back and said, there's, some, there's something to look at here. What did your white paper find and, and, and how, how can we get a hold of that? So you can find the paper on our website, and it was a gathering of about a hundred interim professionals at last year in summer to talk about what are we seeing. Eric is right. You know the the perception is that it's crisis management. We don't think that's what it should be, and so this this paper brings together all that we learned from these interim professionals, what they saw in real life experiences what they're learning, what they think interims need to be focused on. Um, we don't just bring in the mail and keep the lights on. What can we do in that period of time to move these organizations forward so they are ready for their next leader? And it's a very interesting read about what we're experiencing as real live interim professionals. I love that you looked internally uh, across the sector um, of these professionals. I bet it's it's um, something that if you go in the next five years, 10 years, 15 years, you, you're going to see, you know, things organically change. And yet, maybe not. But I got to ask this next part of the question. And that is, given that our nonprofit boards, you know, hire and fire our leadership, do they understand the concept of interim leadership? Do you, are you seeing this, Eric? You, you mentioned that, you know, as a coach and you, you've done interim work yourself. What are your thoughts on that? Um, you know, I think, I think it varies on the um, sophistication of the board, mm -hmm. um, how knowledgeable they are. So there are, you know, it's a continuum. There are some boards who are really clear. And I would say probably most boards are not clear about what, what this is. Um, I think that perception of seat warmer is really... Um, the common common perspective. Um, I think very few boards are really prepared for succession planning uh, for those transitions. Um, there's a sometimes that disconnect between um, the management of an organization and the governance and what does an organization actually need in a time of transition and and interims get to. Um, help provide stability in that that time of transition. So mm -hmm. um, I think there's there's a strong piece of need to do education with boards for sure around yeah. what what this is and what it can do and what can what the possibilities are. Mm -hmm. Joan, what do you think in terms of the interim going in and providing that stewardship of an organization, but at the same time also crafting a story or a lens or a narrative back to the board as to what's going on and maybe presenting different information. I mean, does that happen? And if it does, that's got to be a little dicey. Well, one thing that helps is that the interim is not, in most instances, a candidate for the permanent position. So it may be dicey, but their job is not on the line. I always say we go into interim positions 
pre-fired. We're going to be, we're going to end that job. Um, and that's a given fact. So we can take a few more risks. We can be a little bit bolder and braver than someone that has to protect their job in bringing everyone together in a shared reality. That's why we think every interim engagement should begin with an organizational assessment. Are we all on the same page? Do we all are, do we share a reality about where this organization actually is? Not just where we think it is or where we wish it it would be, but where is it? And then the interim can build on that together with all of the folks in the organization, paid and unpaid people. This is where we are. Where do we want to be? So um, it can be dicey, but it's what an interim can do that nobody else can. Okay, so this is like a hair and fire moment for me <laughs> because I love this concept, but it's got to be somewhat frightening and you have to be a bold leader to go before people that you haven't worked with that you don't really know and lay it out and say, this is what I'm finding. How does that go? But that's that's the beauty of the position, really, is that um, because we're pre-fired, as Joan said, uh, you know, we have that opportunity to be truth tellers, to be disruptors, to be um, really transformative and, and clear about mirroring back to the organization. Here's the things to work on. Here's what I can do in this interim time period. But here's here's some things to um, point into the future for the new ED or CEO when they're hired to to work on. So, you know, I think you're right. It does take some some guts, but I, that's that's part of the profession, right? Is to right. do that assessment and be like, here's what's happening in the organization. Here it is. Lay it out. So, Joan, I I, I love the the um I love the permission that Eric just spell, spelled out that you know this is you know everybody has the permission to do this that you're gonna you know navigate this way this is a heavy lift. Like how long does something like this take? This isn't just a, yeah, I was there for a week and bing, bing, bing. This is what, what you need to do. This is going to take some management and some engagement with a lot of different people. So how do you go about this? We think the ideal time um, sort of on the minimum end for a great interim engagement is probably nine months it probably takes at least that much time for everyone to come together around a shared future vision for the organization. And that's what you have to have to know who your next leader should be. We do talk to boards from time to time that are like, we need an interim. We think six weeks would be great. And I'm like, yeah, well, six weeks is not going to accomplish anything. Um, if you really want to use this time as a capacity building opportunity, and that's what we think of as an interim engagement, it's a chance to build the capacity in a very intentional way for your organization. It's going to take some time. Mm -hmm. Our average through third sector, our average placement is somewhere just a bit more than eight months. And so we, we think this is important that organizations are willing to invest time yeah. into letting an interim bring their skills, their professional viewpoint, and let it do its magic in this really important pause between leaders. I think so, that's a great, great point, that that yeah. pause moment where, um, you know, permanent EDs, we frequently have no time to do the deeper level thinking <laughs> or deeper analysis, right? And yeah. so... The, the opportunity for the interim to do that work. And it's a gift for the organization really yeah. to say, here's what here's what's really happening because yeah. we as interns have the ability to do that uh, where the permanent folks uh, may not. So Eric, it almost sounds to me like a lot of this work could, could dovetail into, if you will, a job description for that next CEO coming on that maybe hadn't really existed or it has changed in that interim period. Do you ever see that? Well, I think, you know, that's one of the things that we believe is that part of the role of the interim is to help the organization understand what exactly they need in the next leader. So that is part of the, the interim process mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm absolutely fascinated by this. Um, and the original question that we had was about um, the board 
understanding what the concept is. We said in the green room, you know, you might understand the English word interim, but you don't really understand the concept of the profession. Joan, I got to believe that throughout the tenure of an interim, um, this is not a one and done educational piece that they're having to, you know, keep going back to the board and explain what they're doing and how the process is going. Is that true? Or is it just everybody buys in? It depends. Mm -hmm. It depends on the board. Um, and some boards really get this interim concept. Some people have experienced it in their faith communities because houses of worship very mm -hmm. often have interims and that goes way back hundreds of years. So we might have experienced it, but in some other way. Some boards do struggle with the concept if this is your executive director for this period of time, they're going to run your organization while they're helping you understand about the kind of leader that you need next. It's a dance. And if everybody's invested in it, it goes beautifully. And, and we love to see that. And there are always adjustments along the way on everyone's behalf. Sure. The interim has to adjust to an organization they've not been in before, mm -hmm. staff members, volunteers, boards. And boards have to adjust to this idea of a temporary leader that's going to help them reach a place they might not have ever reached by themselves. So this just makes me think about like community issues. So Eric, if you, you are, you, you're both in, uh, in the Seattle area. Is that no. true? Okay. I'm Eric. sorry. I Eric? am. Okay. Yeah. Joan, where are you coming to us from? I'm in Fort Wayne, Indiana. That's right. You told me that. Okay. So let me ask the two of you, from community to community. Eric, you probably live in a community where interims are part of the of the nonprofit management ecosystem. Joan, are you? In my community, it is a growing idea. And I think this okay. might be true throughout the Midwest. What we typically see are when a, uh, an organization is in need of an interim, uh, perhaps a board member might step into that position yeah. or a staff member might be elevated to that position. And I'm not saying that never works because we certainly see instances where it's it's very well done. But both of those instances provide some complications that are not present when you hire a professional interim. So we always encourage organizations to look at all the options. Mm -hmm. So, Eric, what about you? What do you see in your community? Because it seems to me like if other nonprofits are getting on board, it's going to be easier for the other organizations down the road. What is what is it in your community? I, I think I would agree with what Joan said, that it's the same, that it's a, a growing awareness of interims. Um, I think because third sector has done a lot of work up here um, and there are other uh, folks who do interim placements, um, that there is growing awareness, but it's not, I don't think it's, it's to the level that we would like to see. Sure. Um, you know, the, we're facing a leadership crisis, which is um, so many of us left our ED or CEO positions during the pandemic. Um, we have sort of an aging leadership cohort. Uh, and so in the face of that crisis, I think having uh, more awareness of the, the, intrinsic possibilities and magic of interim professionals is is really a good thing no matter what yeah i think it's such a healthy thing to step back and to your point eric really address the silver tsunami the change of demographics the aging population and and how we are bleeding off 1.8 million nonprofits in america there's a lot of change coming <laughs> and so we've got to have this talent we can't just you know everybody's competing for this next uh, level of, of leadership. And uh, it's something that we haven't really addressed. Let's talk a little bit about best practices for interims. You mentioned, um, which is riveting, at right off the top, if you are engaged as a professional interim, you should not be also a potential candidate unless you recuse yourself. Um, you talked about doing, I'm going to use, these are my words, an audit of an organization to get, you know, a census, a sense of where the, the entire structure is and where they can go. What are some of the other best practices that we should be looking at when we're considering an interim? 
Well, those are two that are definitely on my list of best practices. Mm -hmm. And along with that is our very strong suggestion that an interim be hired as a W-2 temporary employee, as opposed to a consultant on a contract, on an hourly contract. This is your executive director. They're going to have oversight over staff. They need to be an employee. So we think that is a, um, a good practice to adhere to. But I think there are some other less prescriptive things that, I mean, best practice is always sort of subjective, I guess, to what we think is best, but, but help an interim engagement be powerful, transformational for an organization. And that is that they are thinking about both internal and external relationships in the organization. Sometimes it's really easy to get focused on, oh, I have policies and processes and employees, but how is how does this organization look out in the community? That external mm -hmm. thing is really important for interims to be engaged in. And then I think interims have a very unique opportunity and responsibility to help organizations deal with issues of equity and belongingness that maybe no one else has ever had. Because we are leaving, we can bring these hard questions forward. Mm -hmm. What's happening in our organization around equity? And I think the other thing that interims can do that is very hard for a permanent or settled ED to do is talk about the organizational structure. Do we even have the right leadership structure for this organization? And an interim that's doing a transformational job is bringing those kinds of questions forward. Mm -hmm. So Eric, this seems to me almost uh, like a coaching method as well you know, that these are really big topics and exploration. How, how do you see this playing out with these best practices? Well, think about it this way. You know, I, I think one of the common views, if it's not, oh, the interim is going to just keep the seat warm. The other common view is they're going to come in and fix us. Yeah. Right. That's not it either. Right. Okay, uh, yeah. We can't really fix an organization in nine months. Um, what you can do is lay the foundation. You can paint the picture of what's happening, mm -hmm. um, coach the staff, coach the board, mm -hmm. coach the community around um, what's coming next and preparing for uh, the new leader. So I think there's that um, definite aspect of, of coaching to it where you are re just reflecting back to to the organization what's, what's going on and asking the right questions and pointing them in the right, the right direction. Mm -hmm. So then, Eric, that leads me to ask you, what does that transition look like? Do you see this um, interim being a guide and a leader, or is it like, okay, I'm fi I was five pre-fired, and I'm out of here. It's Friday at five. New person shows up on Monday. Like, what does that look like? I think it's best practice to have a little bit of overlap between the outgoing interim and the incoming. Uh, new permanent ED or CEO, because there's, you know, I think part of our job as interim is to prepare a, a transition document for that person that lays it all out, right? They should get a copy of the organizational assessment um, and then anything that you discover after that, because, you know, you spend 30 days, two months working on an assessment, and then you've got seven more months where you learn more things. And so, mm -hmm giving an opportunity for that that new person to hear all of those things mm -hmm. so i think that that overlap is really really helpful it it gets the the knowledge out of your brain and into into theirs and let them go ahead with it so it's not a like complete solid barrier between the two yeah. well it seems to me like you would save the organization a lot of time and money um, if you could bring somebody up to speed, so to speak, I mean, we all have our own, you know, style and paths and everything, but, but to be given this amazing amount of information up front uh, is, is pretty powerful. Yeah. I mean, you really want to set them up for success. Like that's the, yeah. the thing. So what are the aspects of that? How do you coach the staff about here's a new leader coming in? What, what do you need to know? What do you need to prepare what do we need to do before they get here so that we're ready, right? There's this buffer. It's a buffer time between the old executive director and the new one. And there's there's things you can do to um, 
sort of manage that change? What does the board need to work on in that in that interim? Yeah, <coughs> you know, Joan, uh, Eric just said something really interesting, and I I want to get your um, feedback on this. Is that you know an interim is not just a seat warmer, but you're also a change agent, but you're not a fixer, so to speak, right? Talk to us a little bit about that. Well, I think no nobody wants to be fixed or told that they need to be fixed, right? That, that goes against our sort of human nature. Yeah. What we want to do is immerse ourselves in the organization and guide people with what we see. I often think about it as I come in with a flashlight. You all have flashlights too. I have new batteries in mine. And when I look around, I may say to a board or to staff, here's what I'm seeing. Is that what you're seeing? Mm -hmm. And then we can go on common ground and sort of work out solutions. And and make no mistake, there are sometimes things that need to be fixed. Sure. You know, your board hasn't had up-to-date financials for a year and a half. Let's fix that. Um, but mostly we're evolving, right? How can we move from where we were to where you want to be? And how can this period of nine months or a year or 18 months be instrumental in getting you closer to where you want to be and key thought picking the right person to lead you next and i right. think that's one of our biggest jobs as interims is helping that board understand what they need rather than perhaps what they want right so it, we don't have much time left but um and and this is something that i'm really curious about to get both of your perspectives do you see the interim as being in on all those hiring decisions from, you know, taking meetings and advising the board on this is a good hire or that's not a good hire? Like, or do you separate that yourself out from that? Eric, I'll have you start with that. Uh, I, I was pretty heavily involved in, in my last interim in the, that process. Uh, so I'm a little biased, but I, I think it's important because the, the interim does have perspective on the organization and the needs. And so if they're really helping the board understand what the leadership needs are, then having them participate in the hiring process, I think is, is beneficial to everybody. Uh, you know, the, the knowledge and information sharing is, is key. Uh, if the interim is applying for the job, that's a whole different scenario. Yeah. Why we're, we think it's, it's best practice not to be a candidate for the position. Right. Joan, what are your thoughts on that in terms of engaging in that that decision making process of, of finding the replacement? You know, the board really calls the shots on this, on what role they want the interim to play. We think it's great for an interim to be clear about that when they take the engagement. What is the role you would like me to play in the search? And most organizations understand that they have a trained professional expert now in their midst. And if they're smart, they're going to take advantage of that. But the role can be very different from sitting in on interviews, but not having a say in the final hiring to doing simple things like screening the resumes. So it really is different from organization to organization. But we think the interim can play an important role in helping the board through that. Yeah. Well, last question, and it's kind of a doozy, and we don't have that much time. But Asking the question about what are the resource costs? Um, I was fascinated that you said it should be a W-2. I was fascinated that you said it should be really an extended period of time, you know, that nine month um, window, which nine months goes by super fast. But I, I, I loved that. What are some other thoughts that you have in terms of what we should be looking for? Um, and, and I'm thinking about benefits and you know, if you're with an organization for nine months, that's that's a different track if you're just there for six weeks, right? You know, paid time off, things of that nature. What are your thoughts on that? Joan, I'll have you get started. Yeah, well, it's different. Some of it is regulated by state law. So some of it depends on where you are as far as what benefits have to be offered to an employee. But this is a temporary employment. We think the salary should be based on the salary that you were the organization was paying it's outgoing ED, unless that was significantly below market, then you've got to make some adjustments, right? You're not going to hire somebody for what your founder who never took a salary worked for. So you're going to have to adjust. Benefits generally don't include health insurance or retirement okay. benefits 
because even if you're there for nine months, nobody wants to change their health insurance every nine months, right? And so most interims have that taken care of in some other way. That's a savings to an organization. But salary wise, we think this is your executive director. What's your what's your baseline for negotiating an executive director salary? Um, and then depending on how you hire, there may be some additional costs if you use a referral agency. And if your interim has to travel to spend time with you, there may be that added as well. So, um, but generally we think if an organization is smart about it, it can be close to budget neutral. I love it. So this has been riveting. I have really enjoyed this conversation. Eric, um, if you will remind us where we can get a hold of this white paper that, that really um, illuminates what's going on and what we can be looking at uh, for, throughout the industry. Yeah, it's a great, great white paper. You can find it on the website, thirdsectorcompany.com. Great, great. I really, really appreciate both your times today, Joan Brown, Eric Sealback, joining us um, with some really interesting ideas and a new lens for leadership. We're, we talk about leadership change all the time, but we don't really kind of take that arc and say, okay, how do we do it as opposed to just wringing our hands and then um, being, I don't know, I'm going to say it. It seems like if you go through this process and you pull this professionalism in, you might end up coming out better than when that 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 last leader left, right? I mean, I don't, yeah. yeah, I don't think that's out of the realm of reality that you can actually use this as a time to really strengthen the organization. And I think, Eric, you said it's truth to power and the opportunity to get some amazing feedback is really, for most organizations, not going to come along very often. Amazing. Well, we are thrilled that we've had your great thought leadership here today. Joan Brown, Third Sector Company, Eric Sealback. Yeah nonprofit consultant and coach also with Third Sector. Thank you so much for helping us understand uh, this pretty big concept. Thank you. It's been a lot of fun. Hey, everybody, I want to make sure that we give a moment of gratitude to our partnering sponsors. They include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraisers Friday, and your part-time controller. These are the folks that join us day in and day out so that we can have these really interesting conversations that serve our nonprofit sector and strengthen all of our organizations. As we leave each and every episode, we leave with this mantra. And uh, I always say, Eric and Joan, that I think of this little saying differently according to what the topic has been on the show for the day. And today I'm thinking about the health of our organization. And so I leave with this message, and that is to stay well so you can do well. <laughs>